We got Al here with the ongoing internet series, Dirt on the Fuzz, here with the MP. What's your name, sir? I'm Eva Batista. For sure. What do you know about that Clayton character that went missing? I don't know anything about him. All right, that's fair. And um, you know how Mr. Trudeau was so quick to invoke the Emergencies Act to defend himself against concerned Canadians that want to travel all the way across the country just to get a word with them. And he was quick to invoke the Emergencies Act and have the army, but now I'm hearing that we're up to nine and a half days. We're at five now without power. I was wondering if you have anything you could comment about that. Yeah, first of all, the Emergencies Act was done at a time when Ottawa citizens and yes. Ottawa was making sure that it was under direct attack For sure. against folks who were clogging creating a nuisance, not allowing people to sleep and live. And so after a great deal Sounds of a lot like Fiona. Fiona is a natural disaster. I wouldn't say if a weather event had any kind of intention in mind with, with what they were doing. So For in sure. terms of the emergency act, if you're going to tie that to Fiona, you have to understand that this is something that we had to do in order to get the city in a safe area and to protect people because protect there are a lot of folks who were, who were being harassed. I wasn't one of them because I'm a looking male and so that they generally didn't target people like me but they targeted uh, lady MPs who were uh, of different uh, racial backgrounds and so we had to make sure that we were doing everything to keep those people safe and working on. As for in terms of the emergency map, what you have to understand about jurisdiction is when we're talking about weather events, it's provincial jurisdiction. We have called in the Coast Guard, we've called in Canadian Defense, and so what sure. we're really trying to do is make sure that we're doing everything we can to respond to, sure. to what, what things are, the people need. Now, I had offered my services the day before the storm arrived to this uh, here new Waterford Volunteer Fire Department to say, hey, you know, we need to get these trees off these lines or whatever happens, I'm ready to go. No, I've been sitting here for about five days and no one's really said, hey, go move this tree off of this to get it going. What do you think we could maybe do in the future to increase the, the, the speed and time that we get things back up into running order? I think that's why we have some great volunteer firefighters. I mean, if, if you want to be helping, you sign up for the volunteer firefighting. These are people that vol you can volunteer at the Salvation Army. You can volunteer with uh, the Knights of Columbus. You can volunteer with just about anyone. For sure. What we don't want to be able to tell people to do is to train them to tell them untrained volunteers to pick up a chainsaw to get and potentially and harm for sure. we are, our, our hospitals are in enough rough shape that we sure. don't want to make Guaranteed. sure that people that's very thoughtful. Are, are putting themselves in harm's way because as someone who's and I think handled that's great a chainsaw before, it's not an and easy they're a professional thing to do. and they can do it for sure. But do you think there's maybe for the next time we have a storm, we could maybe have some sort of a system in place where volunteers can, in the times upcoming, get put to work quickly to do some of the work that's maybe not as drastic, but be helping out in some way to help the process get from, let's say, nine and a half days to two or three. Well, I think that uh, we've seen volunteerism from all parts. So even in this place right now, we have people cleaning, we have people cooking, we have people doing... And I want to give a shout out to the fine things. people here that we're talking about that are doing a fantastic job to make sure that people are warm, safe, and well-fed. And so there's all kinds of ways you can help volunteer right now, currently, and in other warming centers. We've been to every single warming center in, in the riding, and we're trying to get to much more up north and just to make sure that we're there to talk to people, have these conversations, and, and answer any questions about what's to come and how things move. And I appreciate us. that very much, that I can actually get a face-to-face -face and get a conversation with the man himself. All right. All right. Nice Cheers. Okay. Alex Dickens with the ongoing Dirt on the Fuzz series. Hey.